What's poppin', this is Mello, back at you with another video, and today we're gonna have a real conversation. So, I'm gonna give you a framework as far as selling beats. Now, it's not gonna be specific tactics and the $5,000 a week method or no shit like that. It's not gonna be that. What it is gonna be is a framework on how the game works as far as selling beats. Now, as far as me, if you didn't know, you might see, oh, he has videos up for six months and stuff. I've been in this space for over 10 years. Over 10 years. I've been on my Flash Store, SoundClick, BeatStars. I didn't been on all that stuff. I've made a lot of money. I've seen a lot of errors and I know how the game works. So with that, another thing that I do want to let you know, over the course of those 10 years, I've seen tactics come and go. I've seen certain things work, certain things not work. And on top of that, I have also bought the majority, I would say, of how to sell beat products out there in my 10 years, including a handful of personal consultations and things of that nature. So any type of operation, funnel, or method you see is gonna fit in this. And I don't really see too many people breaking the game down this way. So I'm about to give it to you in a second. I'm gonna do it pretty much pyramid style. So the bottom is content, the middle is awareness, and the top of the pyramid is posture or position. So we're gonna start from the bottom because you go from the bottom up. So with the foundation, let's start. Content. So basically what content is, that is where the value is created. This is the creation of value. These are the things that your customers will value. We're gonna start with beats. Beats are the foundation. The main thing the people are concerned about is two things. Number one, who your beats fit. Does it fit the person that you're targeting and stuff like that? And number two, how good the beats stack up against other competition and stuff like that. How good the beats actually are. Another part of content is the niche. Because if we're talking about creating value, the value is gonna be in the niche. For example, you could be a trap producer. If you're advertising to people in a space where everybody likes lo-fi and lo-fi beats, they're not gonna fuck with you. So as far as the niche you pick, they're gonna know, oh, this guy over here, I go to him for little dirt type beats, or this person over here, I go to them for J. Cole type beats, which are two completely different type of beats. So when you pick a niche, that's pretty much gonna put you in a pocket of certain type of artists, and it's also gonna put you in a pocket of certain type of customers because a certain type of person, as far as a rapper, is gonna get value from you. Now, two other ones that I won't touch on really heavy. The other one is videos, and that means any type of videos you do are you making beats or the joints you upload to YouTube and stuff like that. Anything like that would be pretty much considered value creation as far as content, because even though people might not buy that, you know, that's the content that you have to put time into creating to help run the business. Because you could have the beats, but you still gotta present the beats and you gotta create the content in a way that makes it presentable. One other one that I'm gonna put, songs with artists, because if you have certain songs that bubble in a certain market, you might not even have like a placement placement, but you might have a song with somebody who's really hot in Florida or something like that. In the Florida market, if this song gets hot, people will look and see who made that beat. They'll hear the tag and they'll check the tag and stuff like that. When I had the YNW Melly Medium Fries placement, you know, I got a lot of love from a lot of people in Florida, you know, when that was going on. So that covers the content as far as the root foundation of everything you got going on. So boom, let's move to the second part of the pyramid, which is awareness. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. Awareness alone could sell a lot of beats. When you're talking about running an online beat selling business, that's where a lot of the attention should go because that's gonna be where a lot of the money comes from. So as far as awareness, the first thing I'm gonna mention, which is by far the most important, is traffic. Traffic is the most important as far as awareness, and I'm talking about site traffic specifically, because I don't care what producer you name, 
if they are on that beat star selling charts or anything like that, they get a certain amount of traffic to their page all the time. That traffic is definitely an indicator of sales if we just gonna keep it 1000. A lot of the stuff that you'll see when it comes to selling beats and stuff like that, it's gonna be related to how to get more traffic, how to get your beats heard more, how to get people to your site. Because let's be real, when it comes to this, like the site is the salesman for the most part. That's just what it is. People don't really harp on that too much, but that's how the game works. So another thing is your plays and stuff like that. How many times a song get played? That's just another indicator of awareness. You also have advertisement, which when we talk about controlling traffic, that's pretty much one of the best ways, you know, people set up Facebook ads and all of that stuff. Then you have direct marketing tactics, which just to give you a real basic one, a direct marketing tactic would be DMing rappers directly. You know, that's one of the most common ones you see a lot of people mention in videos. Last two I'm gonna talk about is social media and big exposure. So social media, I would even consider YouTube like social media just because you know, you have the comments and stuff like that. But that is pretty much where you're gonna get, you know, the majority of people listening to your beats and stuff at. That's where you're gonna get the exposure. That's where you're gonna attract new people from. Even with the advertising, the advertising is gonna be on social media more than likely. I got my first beat sales off of Twitter, basically, you know, following people and stuff like that and getting them exposed to my stuff, having conversations. Then let's talk about big exposure. So what big exposure is, is, oh, beat stars put you on the front page or, oh, you just got a placement with Lil Yachty and the shit is going crazy and people are catching it. Duh, 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 duh. Like, you know, you have your tag on the beat or whatever, whatever. You have an artist that gets their video put on World Star Hip Hop. You know, they set it up to where they have your at name in the description. So those types of things can get you big exposure and that amount of traffic that's going to that content can give you some trickle over as far as more awareness and stuff like that as far as the beat selling. So let's talk about posture and position. What I mean by that is where you stand within the market and what you got going on as far as perception and things of that nature. So with this one, this is the one that's not really in your control. So let's talk about it a little bit. There are three factors in this category that I go over. One is clout, one is brand, one is relationship. Let's talk about relationship because that's probably the most in your control because you can definitely develop relationships and things like that. There are two types of relationships. So there's direct relationship as far as you talking to a person, building with them, you know, checking up on them, stuff like that. You may even have a relationship with somebody that already bought before and they become a repeat customer. The people who have bought the most from me, and this is real game, the people who have bought the most from me over the course of the 10 years, we have always had some form of rapport. I'm saying if they bought two beats, five beats, 12 beats, if they didn't spent $3,000 in a lifetime value and stuff like that, those are people that we have conversations and I'll even hit them up out of the blue just to see how they doing, not even to sell them nothing. Like, so that's what it is. So relationships is important, but the other type of relationship where you may not have that direct report is perceived relationship where they see your personality, they see you, they look at you on social media, you putting yourself out there and people feel like they know you. You know, you may not be reaching out to everybody, but that's how come in my opinion, it's important to put yourself out there, put your face out there, put your personality out there because that separates you from a lot of the people who are just a logo that uploads beats and stuff like that. Quick point, I do want to make it clear, you do not have to get in front of a camera to sell beats online. If you look at the top sellers, most of them don't. But one thing that I do want you to know, if you look at the history of the game and you look at top sellers like Vibe, Superstar O, Taz Taylor, and Cash Money AP, Tone Jones, and a bunch of other producers. Most of them started out just uploading beats as a brand and a logo that didn't really say too much. They all have a physical presence now. They all do something in front of the camera. And most of them even communicate with their audience through the camera. So do what you will with that information. 
but let's continue. So with that being said, let's go to the other two, which are more hard to control. Before we get into this, I wanna break both of them down. When I say clout, I want you to think status. When I say brand, I want you to think reputation. But with clout, you are highly esteemed in the producer space. With brand, brand is in relation mainly to potential customers and actual customers and how they feel about you and what your reputation is within the market. So I'm going to give you a couple examples of the difference in my opinions, regardless what you think the two are, the things I'm about to say are the truth. Let's take the top internet producer. Let's say, how does a top internet producer get to the position that they're in? Well, they're getting a bunch of YouTube plays. They're getting a bunch of, you know, social media follows and stuff like that. They probably been going for a few years. They probably had a couple beats that cracked through and got like hundreds of thousands of plays and stuff like that. They've built their fan base by themselves over time. So they have a fan base, a customer base, people like them. They've built themselves up to have the position that they have. And when you have a good brand, let me tell you, I've talked to some people and I've asked them like, what are you doing? Like inside the business. And basically at that point, like, you know, I did a collaboration with somebody and they said, oh man, I just be at the crib. I don't even be at, like, he stopped uploading beats. He was super inactive when I did the collab with him. But guess what? When he put it up, he in dog, he was inactive for like over eight months and stuff like that. When I did the collab with him, He's still getting crazy sales. He's not advertising. Like I, I'm getting, I'm getting more PayPal notifications from his sales than I am from my sales. So he's still booming and he doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't have to put in the work that I still had to put in. Why? Because his brand in that space was already strong. His customer base was strong. So that's what it is when it comes to brand. Let's take that same top internet producer who might have a couple of placements here and there, might even have a platinum plat. Let's take that same guy and compare him to, you could just say super industry producer over here. So the difference between this guy and this guy is this guy over here is gonna get an endorsement from Beats. By Dre, you know, the headphones, he's gonna get a good, healthy endorsement. This guy over here can't leverage his position to do that because this guy over here has clout. He has status. This guy over here can sell one beat for 20,000, 50,000, a hundred thousand. That's what the super producers were doing at one point. I don't think it's really going like that, but if we talking about a for real, he could still get the hundred K I'm pretty sure. On this side, this guy, the brand guy, the guy online, He's not getting a beat off for $20,000. Now he might get 20,000 on the back end from royalties and stuff like that, but the flat rate, it's not 20,000. It might be a thousand, might be 5,000. You know, it's not really going to be 10,000 or nothing like, like, look, and when I say that, I know somebody will be, Oh no, I be making, I be making $50,000. Like, like, bro, you got, you signed to a label. Now you signed to like universal or something. Now, if you making that, you are in the game. You can get a beat from this guy for 30 to $50. You cannot get a beat from the super clout lord, super high up status guy over here, you can't get anything, you can't get a high five from this guy for $50, nonetheless a beat. So reputation and brand, that can be built. When it comes to clout, you cannot build that yourself. That has to come through association. Anybody you see with clout, high clout, high status, they are intertwined with some type of bigger entity, whether it be Southside, the producer, he was with Waka Flocka, but guess what? He's with Future as well. He's making records for all these people. He's probably got some type of label deal. And also he has a bunch of producers under him that are also working with major artists. He's 
insulated in cloud. It's just a bunch of different entities that are high status that got those big checks to give to them and stuff like that. And that's what it is. When it comes to both of those, those are gonna be a result of the work and also as far as clout, just really the results and the relationships you can create. As far as brand, brand is king if we're talking about the space of online beat selling. Because if you get your brand to a good enough point and you focus and put the work in, at the end of the day, it's gonna be a point where you can just step away and just have the beat store sit and not be putting money into advertising and then money will still keep coming. With that being said, we went through all of this. Let's go over some methods. I seen Ocean a long time ago, pretty much say, you know, the DM method where you pretty much DM a guy, say, hey, how you doing? Talk to him and stuff like that. And then say, yo, I got some beats for you and stuff like that. So if we look at that, Let's look at how that plays into everything. Let's say you have some weekend type R&B beats. Let's say that's your lane. Let's say that's your niche, you got the beats, boom. That covers content. Then for awareness, you go on to Instagram. You try to find out where people who make music like The Weeknd or who like weekend type beats are. Once you find those people on the platform, you reach out to them via DM and you tell them what's good, I liked your music, you have that. That's awareness. You are then on top of that, at the top of the pyramid, the route you've chosen is to build a relationship. So you build a relationship with the person and that trinity right there, those are the things that will get you to the sale. Pretty much maximizing on those things, having the good beats, finding somebody who's really into the weekend type beats and also building a relationship that'll do you. That'll get you a sale. Let's go to a more familiar method, the typical YouTube way of selling beats. Boom. So let's say you make money bag yo type beats. You wanna make the best money bag type beats you can. You get the money bag yo footage. You make the videos and stuff like that. You line them all up and everything. You do the SEO and stuff like that, boom. So you created the content. You have the content ready to go to YouTube. You got it uploaded on your beat store and everything, boom. You start uploading on YouTube that platform is where the awareness is. So from there, you figure out what keywords are gonna get you more views to the money bag yo stuff. It might be too cluttered. It might be too saturated. So what you might have to do is find other, you might have to say money bag yo slash big 30 type beat. A lower tier artist from Memphis, the same market, who makes similar music and raps over similar beats. So you can reel more people in and you can have a higher chance on getting a good ranking on that big 30 type beat hashtag or whatever, whatever, search. So boom, that is how you get your awareness. You just build and you build and you build and you keep putting out content, you stay consistent, then boom, you get a sale here, you get a sale there, you get a sale here, you get a sale there. Shit starts to just happen. As far as what you're doing, you're positioning yourself as a brand and you're positioning your music to where people can consume it and just go to buy it. So that's the second way. So, so let's talk about one last method. And that is the funnel method that you've seen everybody doing and stuff like that. So let's just go through it vaguely. So boom, you make the beats and the content, all that stuff. Boom. So boom, you got the content. Then what you do, you go and you create the click funnel. You use Facebook ads to get them into your funnel. Sign up to my mailing list, get five free beats, boom, boom, boom. And after you do that, you know, of course, there's gonna be like a tripwire and stuff like that. With the tripwire, you give another value proposition. And you might be on camera like, yo, this is Gucci from Gucci Dupe Beats. And I wanna tell you that, you know, you're an amazing, brilliant person and I got some more beats for you. Look, I got 100 beats for 38 cents, only 38 cents. The other ones was for free, but for 38 cents, I got 50,000 beats for you and you gonna love every 50,000 of them. You gonna love this shit. And then boom, you know, they pay the 38 cents, you get your beat. So you had a foundation, you get the free beats. And you also set up whatever paid beats you have in the package, boom. Then for awareness, you pump traffic through a Facebook ad to the funnel that you have. Boom, once they get in the funnel, you then begin to build the relationship. That's it. If you're a beginner, this is extreme. I'm Yo, this has to be extremely insightful for you. If you've been in a game, I hope you found some value from it. 
So it just is what it is because trust me, like the shit that I, yo, I'm gonna just keep it 1000. Like the shit that I just gave you in this video, like nobody is really giving the game like this for real. Not for free, not from what I've seen. Nobody's breaking it down to a T like this. I just haven't seen it. And I've seen a lot of stuff. I've seen a lot of free stuff. I said like, bruh, that's just what it is. So, you know, somebody else might have the $5,000 a week tactic. I don't. I'm just keeping it 1,000. Any method that you get, just peep how it fits in the framework. And even then, if you wanna create your own method, it's usually gonna fall in this framework. And those are the things that you have to think about. What type of content am I creating to compel people to buy the beat and all of that stuff? What am I doing for awareness? And how is this building my brand? Or how is this getting me clout? Or how can I build this relationship? So that's what it is. So let me know what you think. Leave a comment below, all that good stuff. So I see y'all another day, somehow, some way. My man, I'm out.